Well, hello, my name's Dan, aka Spiritual Tradie. If you would like to learn to meditate, if you don't yet have your daily meditation practice locked in and solid, then we need to fix that. Uh, learn to meditate properly, get that deep, nourishing rest, expansive awareness going on and get that as a daily practice, as well as having support. What's going on here? Uh, on my phone over there. Uh, as well as having support for you uh, moving forward with weekly meditations and access to a teacher to um, ask any questions as you progress in your meditation journey. So if you would like to learn to meditate with me, why would we learn to meditate? Well, firstly, because the body is like a sponge and through our life, we're constantly accruing stress and fatigue and we absorb, absorb and absorb and we become tense and tight and full of stress and fatigue and until you know we're 50 and then we're this old wrinkly bag of stress and everything's a problem and that we hate the world we don't have to be like that this is a this is a mistake of the west that we get old like this and and then we get diseases and illness because we're full of tension and stress and we're holding on to it and it's stored in the body and it expresses itself as heart disease and cancer and all this other shit it doesn't need to happen like that so what happens with the meditation is it's a way for us to settle down the mind, settle down the body, not trying to stop thoughts, not trying to, you know, do any kind of control, just be effortless with our practice and enable the body to get that deep nourishing rest that we need so badly. And what that does is start to resolve the stress and fatigue that we're holding in the body. And essentially what that does is enable our true underlying nature, which is always there to start to be expressed. And we start to get access to our underlying nature. Anyway, I can't talk any more about this. If you want to find out more, go to my website, danieltuckermeditation.com. But right now I'm going to be joined by my main man, Taishin Dwen, and we're going to talk about him. So let's see if he comes. Come Mr. Dwen. Hello. Taishin Dwen. Uh, we're trying, we're trying to get him on board. Tyson Vern, are you there, mate? Joining, he's joining. Hang on, he's on the go slow. Here he is, Tyson Vern. <laughs> Did you change your name just for this? Tyson Vern? Buddy, hello, Tyson. Can you hear me? We're going well so far, we're killing it, mate. Very successful potty so far. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, mate? Welcome to the Spiritual Trinity Podcast. We're live. How you going? Oh, I am good. And uh, computer is working. Can you it's hear working. me all well and good? Yeah, we got you there. We got you. Um, I'll just... Uh, wait. Yeah. You can hear me? Got you, mate. Got you good. Yeah. Good. Nice oh, backdrop too. It. Is that your bedroom or is that a spare room? It's the bedroom I'm coming from where all the dreams and love is made. All right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very nice. Uh, what have you been up to during the, the Rona? The Rona has kept been keeping me busy, mate. Um, yeah. It was one of those situations where we had to kind of pivot and move pretty quickly and, um, it's been a nice, joyful ride, that's for sure. Um, it's kind of forced us into a big learning curve and a big growing curve for both myself and my partner, Emma. Um, you're, you're Emma's worst half, is that correct? Yeah, that, yeah. Would, be it. that would be it. That would be, <laughs> be pretty grip. Um, after yeah, the people, if, they're, if they're listening to the podcast regularly, they'll know who Emma's for Mindful Maidman is. And um, for mindful management, that's for sure, yeah. She might have been on almost equally this, the most amount of times as anyone else. I think she's been on only five times. So <laughs> that's, that's pretty epic. She's up there with Spiritual Bogan, who's also been on quite a few times. <laughs> so so you guys created, uh, what did you create, Flow States? Yeah, it's called Flow State Studios. It's a um, live and on-demand yoga, fitness, and uh, meditation community, I guess you could call it, because we... Um, all around the world. A lot of people have been jumping on from um, London, um, Germany and New York as well. So we've had some families coming together and doing fitness and yoga together all around. So it's been really quite um, 
it's been really quite rewarding because just seeing people and like still allowing them to get their their daily fix of yoga and fitness but um yeah and they're, and they're comfortable in their own room and it's actually really been quite a um an eye-opening experience the fact that people's um mindset or even just their habits and the way they're actually now approaching it it's actually becoming kind of like and i've seen that like they don't have to be rushing to a yoga studio or something to be like there like they especially the people in the early morning classes they've kind of really realized that they were rushing to and from yeah and really not getting well they get they get the yoga experience in in the in the studio but as soon as they leave they're like white knuckling driving back to like feed <laughs> their family and get ready for work and they've yeah. really realized now it's given them that extra time they can just kind of roll out of bed do the yoga and then be a little bit more calm throughout the day because they don't have to like rush off to something so it's yeah. been really quite good seeing especially the, the morning crew getting um and that going yeah. uh, and getting habit form so it's really 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 nice actually great and also it's it's really cool because otherwise you normally wouldn't be connecting with these people halfway around the world right so it's a very interesting or a very uh um unique opportunity for you and them to create that relationship and and you know teach people from around the world that you normally wouldn't yeah absolutely like and it's it's been a great way of getting both of our um expertise and just knowledge into a different and uh, different communities and then also bringing our community closer you know because yeah like you know yourself once you're in a in a just in a city or you you're doing one or two different um yoga studios or something like that or fitness studios you kind of just get that community which is great but then getting your knowledge out to a broader community yeah. is really what it's about is like you really want to be able to educate people about what you've learned and what you are doing and yeah. this has been a great way of doing it because people then can see the relatability they can see who you are and, and learn from you wherever they are so Beautiful. and so and also when this is finished and you can travel overseas you'll have plenty of houses to go and stay at when you go to <laughs> when you go to london and paris and all that you'll have plenty of families to go and and crash out right yeah like we can go catch surf our way across <laughs> the globe when the um the yeah planes start flying again yeah i forgot tyson when we've got to give blessings take blessings <laughs> um i can put that down now i've been holding it for the first 10 minutes i thought you were uh, smoking so... a doob or something there this is <laughs> 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 so i just wanted to like get get your story so obviously spiritual tradie podcast and i always jokingly say you know, how did you become spiritual? Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know if you describe yourself as super spiritual or, or not, but I know that you've, you've gone through some pros, some change and, and evolution in your life. Um, do you want to speak to that? Yeah. I, so I'd always been kind of that footy player jock kind of guy coming up through school all the way into my early twenties. And one of those emotively deeply suppressive kind of people it's like i don't mm -hmm. need to deal with my emotions they're there and i don't um you know what i mean and i went traveling and um what happened was i i was over in canada and i was working for a builder and because i'm a carpenter by trade and um was on a, a stepped up onto a roof uh it just snowed earlier in the day and the snow had melted and formed a thin crust of ice and I um, slipped off the roof and it was the second story roof. So it was about, um, about six and a half meter fall. Yeah. And um, fell from the roof, smashed my ankle, my left ankle. And I was off work for about um, 18 months and 11 months on crutches. And I had four operations and stuff in that time. And through that time, I went through a really dark patch. Mm -hmm. um, Probably lucky, to... lucky, lucky that it was only an ankle in retrospect though. Oh, absolutely, mate. Cause like, the the thing was there was a guy in Calgary the the next week he fell the same distance on another site mm. landed on his head and died yeah so in that respect I really like I was blessed from that point because yeah, it was yeah. like I dodged that bullet um because essentially like I was really quite lucky the way I fell 
even though I kind of fell with one, I was falling backwards with one foot caught in the ladder and the, uh, the left foot took all the, took all the weight. Um, yeah, if I had just kept on going back, uh, I was really, uh, I was done. But yeah. so that was a blessing in itself that I still managed to like hobble out of that situation. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, so, but what? But it had, but it had um, impacts on your mental health. Not being able to do the same job, or, or you know. Yeah, like I was there, and I just recently broken up with my girlfriend too at the time. So I had that plus the fall, um, being overseas away from my family. Like I couldn't leave because if I left, I had to, would have had to have come home and paid for all my medical expenses. Mm-hmm. So I was over there kind of by myself, and yeah, it just literally just kind of environmental factors all just loaded on and compounded and then obviously like that um suppressing of mental like and emotional stuff throughout my childhood and throughout my adolescent years and early years that was rising up and then it's all kind of like come to this head where yeah it ultimately went uh went into my detriment of my mental mental health i think like Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where I was a downward spiral into, and obviously, like drugs and alcohol was a big thing as well. Um, that way, while was, you were over there, yeah. So, like, I, that was one way I was trying to escape it because I, I didn't, I didn't have meditation and I didn't have yoga in my life at that point. The only thing I really knew was fitness because, like, I've always been into fitness and stuff like that. So I was running and like before the um, like before the accident, getting through the breakup. But then when mm-hmm. I couldn't do that. It was like, yeah, it was just this slippery slope of just going down and down and down. And yeah, which like, like culminated with me trying to commit suicide. Right. Um, yeah, and like two days later, I woke up. So, because uh, I took a bunch of pills and like, a, like which my like talk screen said that I probably, if it was a, any smaller person, they would have actually passed away. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was actually quite lucky again that I was a bigger frame guy and my body was able to absorb most of that. And yeah, so then that, from that point on, that's when I really started embracing and turning to spirituality. My spirituality at that point was meditation because I had never really done it before. And it really just started to get the wheels turning. Like it was the, the changing point. Like it started to allow me to see that I didn't need to be on these pharmaceuticals to regulate my mood i can i could do that through my meditation and a constant meditation a regular meditation practice and that then started that little like that snowball rolling down the hill like it started picking up pace and Mm. and i eventually got back to sit uh, back to um back to the central coast and back home i started yoga at just a, a a normal gym and yeah and then that was like again that snowball just kept on going and my body and my whole state and frame of mind and knowing like this innate kind of feeling inside that I that intuition side of thing feelings like in yeah. your self-awareness so it starts to come in like no I'm not actually thinking that like I can check that thought at the door now rather than allowing it to snowball and continue on yeah um, and I'm not saying that it's, it doesn't happen now like it's like it's still you still got to check yourself and you got to go yeah. yeah that's that's those little voices in your head are starting to talk or like you're allowed yeah. that story to fabricate um yeah. or you'll still you'll still feel um you know anxiety in the body and you still feel all the feelings all the emotions and i think that's a, a bit of a misconception um that you know i've felt with people and other people that have meditators and people to them say oh well meditation mustn't work because you still feel things or mm-hmm. you know you still you still have anxiety or you still experience um sadness or grief and uh, I think it's a misconception that those things disappear with meditation. It's just more the perspective that we get, right? That shifts. Yeah, absolutely. And I, yeah. I think it's that, that self-awareness and it allows you then to really, um, you can even sit in that, you can sit in your anxiety, you can sit in that depression mm-hmm. and feel, feel that shit. But then you have the self-awareness to pull yourself out mm-hmm. and go, no, we're not going to sit there anymore. Like, this is something that I, I, I feel, I feel grief. I feel sad and you can sit in it and go, yeah, I actually, I actually really feel like crap today. Like, and yeah. you um, acknowledge it rather than just continually like 
feeding it. You acknowledge it that for yeah. what it's for either, what it is. Either feeding it or um, using substance and stuff to get away from it, right? Yeah, and that's the thing is that's what I and I, I turn to fitness. Like, there's a lot of things that a lot of people may not substance abuse and they may not do drugs and alcohol, but they'll find other things to suppress that other the, the thoughts that are coming up and mm -hmm. or and or the feelings and like one thing that i've really found throughout my time um in personal training and stuff in fitness gyms there was a lot of people who had expressed that they're upset and blah, blah blah and they've come to the gym to make themselves feel better and they'll stay there for three or four hours and it's just like that's all well and good you're here you're here doing a fitness thing or you're here doing yoga or you're practicing yoga every day but there's still that time when it actually you do need to sit and unravel those yeah like those little bits and pieces and it's going to yeah. take time and that's the biggest thing i think like for me it was the most daunting thing prior to trying to commit suicide was that it was the actual sitting in the shit to can i swear on this yeah man, go yeah. for it um yeah <laughs> sitting <laughs> sitting in the shit to like actually deal with it and then i was after that all i am like well, you've got nothing else to lose here like you've mm -hmm. literally been you're at the bottom so you may as well try and really start to unravel what is happening and it's still i've always referred to myself as shrek i'm an onion with many layers and <laughs> so it's like you know, yeah yeah so, so i've just got many layers and i'm always i'm still peeling them back but um kind of get to the core now hopefully there's you yeah. know yourself it's a, it's a, a for, forever learning experience i feel yeah and i think once the more that you do it the more you get used to that process and it becomes familiar and you you, you don't uh you you just, you just become more accepting of the process that we go through to peel back the layers you know we peel back a layer and there's some shit in the layer and there's also some some of yourself that you've forgotten you know that that gift that you get every time you peel back a layer it's not that you're doing it for the sake of, um, you know, just experiencing the shit side of it. There's, there's a, a lot to gain by doing that. Oh, there's, you know, there's, there's uh, so much to gain, everything to gain by, by doing it. And I think a lot of the times we can um, not want to go through that process because we fear that the process itself and forget that the bigger picture is more of ourself to enjoy. Oh, absolutely. And like just even like that onion analogy it's kind of like when you or if you pull out like if you've ever had like a leak or something like that and you and you chop up oh this thing looks amazing and you you chop it up and then you fry it up without rinsing it off and then you start getting the grittiness like the all the dirt that is drawn up through like the layers of it and it's kind of the same situation yeah. as like you can have this amazing looking person on the outside and then on each layer there's always going to be that gritty grossness the gritty ground that's kind of like been drawn up as it's as it's grown yeah and it's the same situation with us it's like each time you peel back one of those layers of the leek or the onion you've got to give it a rinse otherwise if you don't give it a rinse that dirt's going to continue to spoil your food mm -hmm. throughout your entire meal and that's kind of the same situation with us it's like you can't think about like maybe your uncle told you you had a terrible haircut when you were three and it stuck with you until now. And you have this complex about how bad your hair looks every day. Yeah. And it could be that uncle that's kind of, you just haven't uh, deal with washing it away. And that's kind of thing you start to really just quote like work. And then, like you said, it's like once you start peeling it back and doing the washing, it's just like, it's a part of the process. It g gathers momentum as well. Yeah. 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 And so, um, so you learnt, you learnt um, yoga and meditation. When did you decide that you wanted to start teaching this stuff? Um, for me with yoga, it was, wasn't until I moved to Melbourne. Um, I'd always been one of those people like, I'm not going to chant. I'm just doing the yoga. I'm just doing the asana. Like, this is it. Like, I'm, I walk in, I sweat bullets for an hour because I'm holding myself up on the wall and then I leave. But, um, yeah, I moved to Melbourne it was almost four years ago now. And I first started at a yoga studio in Elwood. And um, my big passion is for men's mental health. And um, since all my stuff's gone on and I, um, at the time I really wanted to just run men's, 
fitness and yoga um, retreats. Yeah. So where men could come together and just like be men, but also peel back the layers, but learn the practice of yoga and also getting the fitness in. Yeah. So that's when I started, that's when I decided I want to do yoga teaching because I just wanted to be able to do the whole thing on a yoga retreat. Mm -hmm. But then doing the whole yoga teacher training, you go on that journey and you realize I actually have this skill set, this um, potential to actually access and help a lot more than just men. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's what really kind of drew me to it. It was just the, the mental health side of things. And I, I knew and I saw like the benefits that it's really helped me. Um, and then I just really wanted to be able to help as many people. And that's been my biggest thing ever since I yeah. started like in the industry, like fitness and yoga industry is just it actually just really helping people like see the best in themselves. Like, Mm-hmm. A lot of people can see what you like. I can see the best in you and what you, but then quite often a lot of people can't see what they've, they've got and it's allowing them to see it and unlock it. And that's what I really found with yoga. It really allows that yoking of mm-hmm. the, the individual themselves. They're bringing themselves in and finding them their whole. So yeah, yeah. that's like a couple of years ago, two, two and a half years ago now I became a yoga teacher. So yeah. Yeah. And so you were, you were teaching and fitness instructing before that? Yeah. So I've been a, I've been a PT for a, about 11 years now. Yeah. So I was fitness instructing CrossFit coach. Um, mm-hmm. So my, my, like my big passion with like even just bringing it into my yoga classes is more along that functional um, learning how the body actually moves in space um, mm-hmm. rather than just kind of just dumping into joints and not activating and stuff like that so that's yeah. like kind of what i bring into well, that's what i do bring into my classes more so um and then obviously being a relatively new to the spiritual side of things so um as opposed to some other teachers who have been like practicing quite a while and they can spout out any kind of philosophy just like <laughs> anything like yeah. i still draw on my own experiences and then try and um articulate that way yeah 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 i I had a vision of of you and me doing uh weekend retreats up here when you get up here yeah i think that would be great i'd love to do that specifically for men like a like a friday night saturday sunday kind of jump start um physical movement uh i know it's kind of along the flow states line but you know learn to meditate do some yoga and just like a transformational weekend kind of, you know, thing going on. Yeah, absolutely. I think that would be powerful. eh? I think that would be amazing. Um, And it's just, and it's that I've I've found a lot of dudes now are actually starting to kind of dip their toe in the big pool. So like, they're kind of like dipping it in, seeing what it's like. And um, you're not going to obviously like yourself, you know, like being the tradie, you're not going to win everybody over, especially like the tradies are, are really quite, not this is the way to do it blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, that's... we can be like that yeah yeah like, you know, i've had i've had a lot more a lot more questions and coming from tradies lately as well so i think it's starting to starting to turn a corner that's great and that's what and that's one of the uh that's one of the great things because like that's a that's one I, that's one of the things i've really seen especially in the men's industry that's one of the ones that i've really wanted to to get into and because like coming from a, the trade background and spending quite a lot of time and my dad and my brother are both um, carpenters as well and um, builders and just seeing how much it affects them and actually and then yeah it's a it's a great industry to be able to um, really help and allow them to see the benefit of what we have to offer that's for sure yeah yeah um, so uh, and you learned recently to become a meditation teacher too. I take it one giant mind. Yeah, one giant mind. I trained with the guys. Um, I, gotta, I think I finished. I was August last year, August September last year. I finished. Yeah. Um, yeah. So loving that. Um, em and I run the the one giant mind uh, being technique on our retreats. So we teach people to meditate over our retreat time and Beautiful. just seeing the people even like from day one to like session three. And then because the last one we did in Byron was four or five, I was the 
um, four days, five nights. And on the last morning there, they um, just people just having that instant um, experience with being and just like being able to take, like show people that there is that option of like being able to just have that experience of one and nothingness. Or, yeah, or they're, the yeah, they're true. They're like their true self. It's like hard to explain, right? It's this. It's it's just something diff so different from our usual state. Something so different from the usual thinking mind of like caught in, caught up in stress and fatigue. That you can teach someone to sit down and drop into this deep space. And and like you said, in three or four days, you notice their physical appearance starts to change and they just demeanor. They just become a little bit softer. And yeah, it's beautiful, huh? Yeah, absolutely. And I. And that's one of, I think soft is one of the best things that I've kind of like even found out of the meditation and even doing um, the technique is that it has, it's even kind of made, made me more soft and more mellow. I like, mm-hmm. I can still kind of get like agit or not agitated, but like things put me off, but it allows me just to soften a lot quicker and notice what is like that, if I'm responding or reacting to a certain situation. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, t- and then it's just seeing the people that we, we teach experience that pretty much automatically straight away is, mm-hmm. it just proves that it's just such a powerful technique. And, um, mm. and especially to the people who are like the hardest, like I can't meditate. You, you like, there's no way you'll be able to teach me to meditate. Like I, I can't switch my mind off. I can't do this. I can't do that. But it's yeah. all well and good because you don't have to do any of that because that's, that's right. the best thing about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the, and you just to see them drop in and come out and be like, oh, I did it. And they don't, and there's no struggle. So it's great. Yeah. So, um, and, yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you, I was going to say, do you have a, a favorite wisdom or quote for the Trady podcast? I have a few. I had, I just, I wrote them on my, um, on my phone here before because I was like, yeah. There's a couple that I really, that really jam with me. There's a couple from the, the Dalai Lama that kind of got me through my deep, deepest, darkest points. Yeah. Um, do not, uh, the Dalai Lama one was, do not let the behavior of others destroy your inner peace. Mm. So that was kind of, for me, that was around the time when I was, um, had the breakup and dealing with like my boss and I'd fallen off the roof. And, um, I was give, I was gifted the art of happiness by the Dalai Lama. And that was one of the ones that really kind of stuck with me. It's, been, it's kind of stuck with me throughout, um, the time. Cause it's like, there's times where you can really focus on what other people think of you mm-hmm. and, compare yourself to other people and I've always been someone who's kind of like compared and even like <clears throat> when I got back to Australia and I started coaching up in up in New South Wales and I was always comparing myself to other people and comparison's good but if you're comparing yourself or you're allowing people to take your inner joy then you're not like you're just consistently giving everything out and it's like, you're not going to be happy within, within yourself. And that's yeah. one thing that's really kind of stuck with me for quite a while. That one for sure. Mm-hmm. It's, and to appreciate where you are on your own journey and to be sort of grateful for where you're at instead of constantly needing to be better or to, to, to judge yourself against where someone else is at when, you know, yeah. and, that, and that's the big, and that's one of my biggest things also where I tell people with, um, in yoga and in stuff as well, especially people getting in into yoga as like not judging your chapter one to someone else's chapter 11. Mm. Cause it's like, um, what's the, that other quote is, um, comparison is the thief of joy. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't think, I think it's all, um, I think it might be the other one that was also someone said that, but it's like, that is it. Cause it's like, wherever you are on your journey, someone else is always going to be on a different journey on a different point in a different time frame. Yeah. And um, if you're going to continue to look at that person or, and um, it's good to strive for it, but then mm. not put yourself down if you're not getting. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You have another one. Um, 
then the, uh, the other one I posted on my Instagram not too long ago, um, it's an Osho quote. And each person comes into this world with a specific destiny. He has something to fulfill, some message to be, has to be delivered. Some work has to be completed. You are not here accidentally. You are here meaningfully. There is a purpose behind you. The whole intends to do something through you. So it's like essentially what yogis and stuff are talking about is your dharma here on in this physical unit that you occupy right now. So yes. whatever you've been kind of put here to do on earth is um, one is the key is finding that. And then two is like, living into it and allowing it to manifest in many ways. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So they're two, they're two of the big ones that are really sit with me. And obviously the um, comparison is the thief of joy is probably another good one that I just kind of pulled from the ether. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, where, where do we find you, mate? If we want to find you for training or yoga or meditation or where do, where, how do we get, get a hold of you? Um, you can find me at Tyson Venn. Um, T -Y Tyson Venn? <laughs> what, what's, your, what's your actual name? Tyson Venables? Tyson Venables, yeah. Okay, so right. Some people think I say Venables. Some people say I think I say Wenables. <laughs> it's Tyson Venables um, with a V for Victor. Yeah. Um, yeah, Tyson Venn on Instagram. Um, TysonVenables.com. Do, do, uh, do you still have Venn Morrison? I still have Ben Morrison. He's still down there. He, his battery's gone flat a couple of times in yeah. the boat, in the auto. Uh, my car's completely black. The battery's gone. Uh, I can't even lock the doors because it's that flat. The central lock. I, um, work. <laughs> I had the same thing yesterday. I went out there and he, uh, I went to start him and the, I thought the immobilizer went off and it did and then the alarm started going off and it was at 7 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> And then I had I, I couldn't because I couldn't switch it on then to turn the immobilizer off. I had to disconnect the battery to like uh, immobilize everything and then restart it all over again. But yeah, yeah he's going well. He's going well. Like um, probably look to um, upgrade him at some point after isolation. But yeah. So when are you guys coming up here to live live the the Byron life? When the premiers reopen the borders. When they open the borders. Yeah. So right, we. So maybe like June, July. Yeah, unless anybody out there wants to um, sublet our house here in Brighton. Uh, yeah, it's a nice place. Yeah. Check it out, guys. Yeah, it's a lovely place just around the corner from the beach. So you... <laughs> where, where is that? Brighton, it's Melbourne. Your bedroom. In, in Melbourne, right? Brighton. Brighton in Melbourne, yeah. Mm. So if anybody is looking to move from Melbourne. Then is, it still, is it still near Warrior 1? Is Warrior 1 still there? Yeah, yeah, they're still there. They, they've got two on the same street now. So right. um, we're near the first, the little one. Yeah. So if you like your yoga, get there, live there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so right. if people want to find you, Tyson, when on your Instagram or Flow State Studios? Flow State Studios, yeah. Flow State Studios is my main um, point of call right now. So that's, yeah, Flow at Flow State Studios. And you're running classes there daily, weekly? What's going on? Daily. Uh, we've got up to four classes a day, a mixture of yoga, yin, and fitness classes. Magic. Awesome. Yeah, we're actually get... launching our meditation courses as of uh, this week. Mindful Very May. Good. Beautiful. Lovely. Yeah. Awesome. Do you want to, anything else to add before we wrap it up? Um, no, I think that you've covered it all. And um, awesome. thank you for having me on. That's been great to uh, have you here for um, Spiritual Tradie Satsang. Namaste. Thanks, mate. Thank See you. Ya.